These are the Wolfdahl Glendale XP2 released in 1978 represents the last iteration of the classic range. To celebrate its 85th anniversary, Wolfdahl has re-engineered some of its most iconic models as part of the Heritage series, like the Denton, Linton, Dolfdahl, and Super Denton. I had a chance to try the Linton Heritage with the NAT C3050 amplifier myself, and needless to say, they sounded great. This got me curious about the sound of the classic range, which led me to the Glendale XP2. I chose the Glendale XP2 over the Linton XP2 because Glendale sits on top of the XP2 series and is about the same size as the Linton Heritage. If you own any pair of speakers from the classic range, leave a comment below and tell us what you think. At first glance, the build quality of these speakers seems fine, but I feel that the bracing is somewhat subpar, as the cabinet sounds a bit hollow for my liking. Also worth mentioning, during a frequency sweep, I noticed a hint of distortion in the high frequencies on one of the speakers. Despite this, there was no noticeable distortion or cabinet vibration during music listening, so take it with a pinch of salt if you will. The frequency response shows a dip of roughly between 600Hz to 3.6kHz, but then there's a 6dB climb from 4.2kHz to 8.3kHz followed by a roll-off starting at 15.5 kHz. These XP2 do really well when it comes to the sound dispersion. There is barely any change in sound from the center to 45 degrees off axis, with only a 2 dB drop from the center to 20 degrees. The roll-off shift from 16 kHz to 13 kHz, but the volume stays consistent. Pretty impressive. To test the Glindo XP2, the Win Mini is used to connect to the Yamaha RN500 via optical cable. Room correction EQ is applied to the 10 band EQ within the Wim Home app. I have only applied half of what Room EQ Wizard has measured as I want to somewhat keep the EQ to a minimum and the music will be from Tidal. Without the EQ on, the first impression of this Glinda XP2 is quite forward sounding. They fill the room with sound nicely. The sense of scale and depth is good thanks to the cabinet size. They pull you into the music with ease. The Burian Girl by Michael Jackson would be a good showcase here. Each element from top to bottom sounds neat and well layered. The sound from these vintage speakers has good realism when playing Bubbles by Yossi Horikawa. Each bounce of the ping pongs, marbles, and basketballs combined with that dry reverb sounded superb. The attack of each bounce might be just a tad slow, making the stereo image a bit messy unless the elements are panned hard left or right. Anything in between gets a bit blurry, but this doesn't change the fact that these speakers still hold their own. With the EQ on, the soundstage takes a step back and becomes more relaxed. The bass becomes cleaner and smoother, which I prefer. Put on Landmark by Antonio Forzioni, and you will notice the guitar has a nice clean sound to it. The snippets are well isolated from the music, making the quality difference between them clearly audible. The shaker in the background is subtle but easily noticeable. Treble elements like hi-hats and cymbals are crisp without being harsh. With the Glinda XP2, the mid-range is where these speakers truly shine. Put on Easy On Me by Adele, her voice sounds full and present. Usually, there's a hint of nasality to her voice on other speakers, but very little is on display here. The reverb lingering after each line also sounds fantastic. Songs with male vocals like No Sanctuary by Chris Jones also shine through these speakers. His chesty voice and the well-spread, full and bassy backing vocals are impressive. Overall, these speakers excel with vocal tracks, while a touch more transparency would be amazing, but I might be asking too much here. When it comes to a more delicate sound like Deja Vu by Natalie Press, the speakers struggle a little to handle her singing along with the lead guitar and the keyboard. The guitar melody is slightly lost, a bit disappointing, but still very enjoyable. 
perhaps modern rock music is the most underwhelming with these speakers. While there's enough bite in non-state actor by Soundgarden and sufficient bass to drive BFG Division by Mick Gordon, they don't sound as engaging or exciting as the tracks intend, and that extends to classical performance like the suite from Back to the Future. Not that they sound bad, but they lack the energy these songs demand. With these vintage speakers, how could I resist spinning some vinyl? My setup is pretty basic, a Sony PSLX 310BT with Audio-Technica ATN91 stylus and a Pioneer A400 amplifier. I played the original release of Off The Wall by Michael Jackson and Dave Burback Quartet in Europe. I'm not going to comment on the sound quality since these are old records and they don't sound like they used to, but there's an undeniable authenticity to vinyl that these speakers bring out. Given the age of these speakers, they perform well beyond my expectations. Their timing and details are still on par with some modern speakers. During my time with them, I experienced no listening fatigue. It's a treat to listen to them with some volume. If you appreciate delicate vocals, these speakers won't let you down. Without any EQ adjustments, the soundstage feels more intimate and engaging. While they are versatile speakers, they excel with less intense music, but they might still suffice for some. I hope you enjoyed my video, I love discovering new music, so if you have any suggestion, please share them in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.